Welcome to How I Grew My Practice, the podcast where health professionals share the behind the scenes stories of how they built a thriving practice. Each episode will uncover surprising challenges, victories, and life lessons learned throughout their journeys. Let's get started. Welcome to How I Grew My Practice, a podcast presented by Next Health. I'm your host, Alec. In this episode, we have Next Health's very own Harrison Grant, a sales leader and one of Next Health's very first employees, here to talk about the stigma and importance of online booking in 2023. Harry, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Great, Alex. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. For those who don't know Mr. Harrison Grant, if you can just give us a little bit of background on yourself. I know I gave you a little bit, but uh, who you are and kind of what brought you to Next Health and what have you been up to here? Yeah, so I joined Next Health right out of college. So graduated college in 2019, joined as a I was the the first SDR here. So SDR person that calls practices a hundred times until they agree to meet with meet with us for a demo, right? Um, since then, I've I've been an SDR. I've been an account executive, so like running those demos, showing practices next health. Um, I've been a, a like a team lead as well as now I manage a team of account executives. You know, teaching them how to show next health to practices, um, how to you know convince people that something like online booking, for example, is 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 beneficial to a practice. Cool. Well, I mean, here for those who don't know. Harry, given that he's spent, I mean, two plus years speaking with thousands of dental practices, um, has really seen the pitfalls of, of ways that, you know, practices kind of fell and then other ways in recommendations or making recommendations to improve practices. Again, one of those things that uh, we at Next Health certainly recommend is online booking. But Harry, as you know, and I now know after being here for years, a lot of practices just do not have online booking available on their website or their social media channels. There's really a stigma behind online booking. If you can share a little bit about what that stigma is and why practices haven't quickly adopted online booking at their practice. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's pretty interesting because um, like online booking, it's like it, it's so prevalent like in society, right? For all sorts of different things. Like if there's an option to book online, majority of people are going to take that option every time, whether it's a you know haircut, you know, booking a plane, movie tickets, et cetera. Um, but in dental, it's like very, very, very low prevalence. Like very few dental practices have online scheduling, like true, you know, integrated online scheduling. Um, and from my experience, like there's a few reasons why. Uh, the, the main one is it, it's not that like dental practices don't see the value of it. Like they, they know people like scheduling online. Like they know people call them after hours and such, right? Um, but it's typically a stigma of like, maybe they've tried it before with a different company. Um, and that company probably had like more of a templated, like one size fits all approach for online scheduling. Um, and didn't really pay attention to the fact that like every dental practice is very unique, um, very different, both in like how they schedule patients, like their workflows for scheduling patients, um, as well as their priorities, right? Are they trying to like grow a ton? Are they trying to get just cash patients? Do they not want certain types of insurances, that sort of thing? So um, I think the, the stigma is generally uh, not believing that a company that does online scheduling like Next Health can actually provide a scheduling tool to an office that's like not gonna make a huge headache for their scheduling team, right? Um, and so that's ultimately like what we have to like try to battle like every day is like, you know, yeah, online scheduling makes sense, but like, is it going to destroy our our schedule and is the doctor going to be upset and all, all these different things, right? Yeah. When you say that there's headaches at the office, so let's say uh, a practice adopted online scheduling, but it caused a headache to the point that it wasn't being used and it was just causing more mayhem than it was being productive. What do you like? Can you describe a little bit about what that headache is? What are what are things that happen in the office where they would be like this? This just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it depends. Like, if if I had to try to, you know, sum up all the uh, bad experiences that can and have happened with online scheduling tools, it would take take quite a long time. Um, I would say, like, generally, it's <clears throat> um, patients 
not knowing what appointment they want to book, booking the wrong appointments online. Um, and then that scheduling tool, you know, not being able to account for doing that appropriately, as well as like, you know, not scheduling someone at the times the practice like would like to schedule them. Right. So for example, like a doctor has a preference of only doing, let's say hygiene from 12 to 5 PM. Um, most scheduling tools in the past, like don't have the ability of like executing on like making that happen. Um, and so there's this general just belief that like scheduling doesn't work. Online scheduling doesn't work for a dental. Um, I would say there's also like a lot of misconceptions. I think, you know, one, one of the, the most common one when I talk to um, office managers, dentists and such is like, there's no way an online scheduling tool could like book our treatment, like procedures um, in the way that like a office manager or like scheduling coordinator can to which like they're hundred percent correct. Right. It's like if, you know, one patient needs an hour and a half for an extraction, the other needs, you know, two hours for the extraction. Um, like we're not going to really be able to differentiate that. Um, but also it's like, if, if someone needs an extraction, like the ease in which they can schedule that appointment, it's like not going to play a huge factor. Right. Like, whether they have to call or email or send like a homing pigeon, you know, they're going to like get, get their extraction if they, if they need it done. Um, so I think that misconception that we're going to be booking all these like treatment procedures, which are super, super variable, a um, lot of preferences that surround them. Um, not going to be doing that. Like what we generally focus on with online scheduling is like, there's more preliminary appointments, like, um, the new patient exam or new patient exam and cleanings, the consultations, the, you know, existing patient cleanings, like recalling patients back into the office. Cause those appointments, like, to be honest, like a cleaning can oftentimes be relatively trivial to a patient and like their overall health, like they're not going to die if they don't get their, their cleaning. But at the same time, it's like typically always covered by insurance. So it's not like they're paying a ton of money for that appointment. Um, and what that causes is, like the ease in booking actually does play a factor and like whether or not they book with that practice or book at all. Um, or, you know, maybe it takes them a super long time to remember that, okay, they got to call the office during the day at work and such. So when obviously there's online booking that's offered that will not meet the needs of a practice, their online scheduling workflow, and mm -hmm. that there are some technology out there that does actually customize enough to fit the bill. What are the characteristics of technology that dentists and office managers should be considering when finding the right online booking tool? Yeah, good question. Um, like first, what I would consider kind of like table stakes is uh, the integration with the health record system. Um, like I can definitely understand like massive frustration with scheduling tools, if every time someone books, the appointment time they booked is not actually available in the schedule, um, or, you know, it, it would be like a double booking, right? Um, or, you know, the office gets the request for the appointment. And then when by the time they go to put it in the health record system, like that appointment's already taken, right? Like that would cause massive frustration if I was like in, the, in those shoes, right? So the integration, super key. Um, making it so that there's like a 24 seven receptionist working with the practice. Um, that's going to put the appointment actually into the health record record system. And if they want a new patient to be created upon scheduling, like doing that for them as well, that's super important. Um, but the only reason like that is effective and not like a fiasco for the scheduling team is the custom building of the scheduling tool. So, if you're going to sign up with a company that is like a one size fits all approach, right? Like where they just give you like this templated tool um, and, you know, tell you to, you know, get, get after it. Uh, it's not, it's not going to work majority of the time. Um, so making sure that you're using a company that is consultative about, Hey, like how do you schedule patients? What are your priorities? Right. And then customizing the scheduling tool based on those things. Um, and there's like, hundreds if not thousands of different iterations of how you could uh you know curate the, the scheduling tool um and ultimately it all depends on like the practice what they need um, how they're scheduling patients so if you don't have those two things uh it's probably not going to work and that's where i can understand like the stigma right it's like i don't think there's many companies that actually can do that yeah 
So 2023, mm -hmm. practices often fall into their habits. They have technology that they may like, they may not love. Um, some, I guess, to I think the stat is that only t around 25% of practices have online booking. So there's still obviously so many that do not. Why make a change today in May now to consider an integrated online booking tool for your practice? Yeah, good question. Um, I mean, I, I can, I'm one of those people where like, it, it, you know, it's, it's almost never the right time to do like anything different. Like I'm always like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it. I'll do it next month. Um, so I definitely understand this, this concept of like, um, you know, I like the idea of scheduling, but like maybe after the summer when like, we're like, we're not, we're not as busy. I, I definitely understand that. Um, and, and I would just say like, uh, in term, it, it depends like what the office is, like what their goals are, what they're striving for. Um, like different people and different goals require like, um, different reasons for having like online scheduling, of course. So if, if you need to grow, for example, um, if you need to grow now, not in August, then like, that's a good reason to get online scheduling. Um, also uh i guess with you know summer coming up like one of the busiest times of years of, of people looking for for dentists so um i mean there, there's a lot of opportunity out there it just depends on how soon you want to try to capitalize on that um and in obviously like you can acquire patients without scheduling cool like of course but um i think it's hard to argue that it doesn't increase your chances of getting that patient if they find you at 8 p.m. and you can get them right then and there and you don't have to re rely on them getting hold of you tomorrow or your staff getting a hold of them from like a contact form, for example. So, um, yeah, it just depends. I, I would say like depends on the practice. Like if you're booked out super far in advance um, and, uh, you know, you don't really need more new patients or need more, um, you know, consultations like Invisalign and stuff like that then I, I probably wouldn't try to convince you to get it. Um, but if you are looking to fill the schedule, it's it's in ultimately a more convenient way for patients to get on your schedule. And uh, I think we've seen time and time again in like so society in general, it's like convenience equals uh, more opportunity, ultimately like more more revenue. Yeah. What if, So I think the intuitively, it totally makes sense that if you have online booking, it essentially means that a patient can book you when they mm -hmm. want to, which is often after hours from their own work. But can you explain a little bit about how online booking helps practices from an efficiency perspective? Because I think that that's something that a lot of practices don't see, uh, you know, right off the bat. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it can be like, you know, fairly obvious. I think the, the, the important things to understand is, um, you know, a scheduling tool can actually uh, make it more time intensive to get like that same appointment in a lot of cases. I think that's where like a stigma comes from. You know, it's like you get this re appointment request. Now you have to get a hold of that patient to like try to reschedule their appointment, like all these, all these things. Um, and so for like the efficiency side of things, if like, First of all, it needs to be set up, like I was saying earlier, like based on like their goals, like their priorities and how they're already scheduling patients. And once that is true, um, then ultimately it's just another patient that you don't have to get a hold of on the phone. Like, like I, I think we can all um, sympathize with like, you know, front office workers and all the calls they have to make, um, you know, all the smiles they have to keep throughout the day. Right. Um, and so just reducing that call volume, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, like less calls, same or more amount of appointments. And uh, like what I tell people is like, you know, offices that I've signed up in the past that I, that I speak with, like one of their favorite things is like getting to the office in the morning, checking their voicemail. And instead of having like five voicemails to reach back out to, like they can, their calendar has five booked appointments on it. Right. Um, so I think it can be pretty obvious. It's just um, less patients you have to track down over the phone or play email phone tag with. Um, rather, they can book it, you know, when they are being proactive, which to be honest, like for like a hygiene appointment or something like that, like 
pretty slim windows of time when the patient's like, I need to get this appointment, you know? Um, so like when they feel that proactivity, capitalizing on it immediately is, is important. Cool. Hey, right, we're coming up at the 15 minute mark. I just want to give you a quick last opportunity. Um, is there anything on online scheduling that we have not discussed that you think is top of mind for the audience to be aware of? Um, yeah, I would say like, I think it, it's pretty easy to talk about online scheduling. And I think pretty common to think of it from like a new patient perspective, right? Like people, it's online scheduling, right? People going online on your website, your social media, um, any marketing and ads you do, right? Um, but I would say one of the, like what's even more uh, beneficial for a practice than that is uh, how effective it is for your existing patients as well. Um, and so one of the like main, you know, things people love about um, Next Health is that we don't want to be like a notification tool to say like, hey, you're due for your appointment, figure out a way to get a hold of us to book that, right? We want to say, hey, you're due for your appointment, here are the next available times to come in for that. Um, so the patient can book with one click. We already know who they are. We already sent them the email, the text, right? So they don't have to fill out all their information over again. Um, in that process, we're getting your existing patients back on the schedule and making sure you're retaining patients at a high rate. Because a lot of offices pay quite a lot of money for like each new patient. It's important they keep coming back. Um, I can definitely understand frustration with having to track all those patients down yourself, like over the phone. So um, I would say like, don't forget about online scheduling in all your communications, right? So any message you send to a patient that has the goal of getting them to book an appointment, let them book it right from that message. Don't make them, you know, track you down. Yeah, we'll definitely need to get you back on to have a whole conversation about retaining patients, recare uh, care programs. Um, but folks, this is Harry Grant. Uh, if you want to have a conversation with them, Feel free to go to Next Health. You might be lucky enough if you click the get a demo button to have a conversation with him. If not, just ping him at Harry or Harrison.grant at nexthealth.com. Um, Harry, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks so much, Alec.